the discussion we're having here today has to do with uh, me sharing information to the greater community about experiences uh, that I've had and the understandings and the knowledge that I've um, come to know over over a period of uh, a great number of years, obviously, and um, the experiences I've had are really, well, to put it simply, are really out there for a lot of people. They, they're quite vast and, and varied, and it's given me the opportunity to see this reality from many different perspectives, many different layers, um, from layers within what we refer to as the veil or the illusion or it's got many terms and also from outside the veil. Uh, I've taken many journeys beyond this reality and those journeys have um, not just that this the destination hasn't been on one level it has been on many levels beyond this reality and uh, I'll just like to preface the talk now by reading this out because we, we like to express things but there's some people that just nail it and uh, uh, a good dear friend of mine, Leone, nailed it so I'll just read this paragraph to you because it sums it up. The only thing we as individuals can really and truly teach from is the foundation of our wisdom and our own truth. To teach from anything else this includes all belief systems, religions, philosophies, doctrines, etc. is to be a disperser of knowledge, not a real teacher. Every single person on this planet has something to teach. There are no exceptions. To truly teach is to trust that your own unique knowing is worthy of being taught. Therein lies the meaning of our existence here, to shine and to teach. All belief systems, religions, philosophies, doctrines, etc. have flourished and remained in place for so long because we as a race have found it easier to spread that knowledge. To be or not to be. That's, that's what Shakespeare was saying. Not the true untapped knowledge of our own heart, our own sovereignty, our own godliness. A godliness that we were never separated from. When will we awaken and realise that the only knowledge worth truly teaching is what we know? Who we are and what experience has taught us. Anything else, anything adopted is attaching us to something that keeps us from knowing our true self. Yes, we will see ourselves and resonate with the teachings and knowledge of others. However, in this life to fully express the entire spectrum of our own godliness is to teach from our own unique spirit, the very spirit that is connected to all that is. And I think that pretty much sums up the message that I wanted to begin with. That the body of knowledge that I'm sharing with you here today is, the, the vast majority of it is my own experiences. And that's where it's coming from. Um, I'm not going to stand here and regurgitate other people's work. I'll, I'll, I'll reference some things but not, not the whole lot. So I'll begin with an experience that I had in 2003 where I found myself uh, being picked up and taken by a group of beings who were familiar to me. It was, uh, it was like family and took me to a place which was not of this world and when I met these people I knew they were family like um, it wasn't like a negative abduction experience or anything like that and then I found myself they were preparing for me to go through this individual process where I left my body and not on an astral level there's different levels you can leave your body there's different types of consciousness that you can access from your being and leave your body and then travel around. Um, the most common one people know is astral travelling. You can travel in what some people term the etheric level. And, but this was my full-blown consciousness. Everything came out of my body. 
and I was pure consciousness, which is the omnipresent part of our being, where we can just go anywhere and do anything. And so I travelled up through the dimensions of the universe and I went through all the different levels and then I came back and when I came back I couldn't stop laughing. I just couldn't stop laughing because prior to me actually leaving the body and taking the journey, I still had a lot of the lower ego attached and when I came back and realised what's really going on around here, I just couldn't stop laughing, it was hilarious and the laughter was, I've never laughed like that before, it was so deep and joyous. So I'm going to begin this first part of the talk because we're going to have three parts to it and I'll, the first part will be I'll discuss the structure of the universe and I've done this before but there are some subtle changes because the, the journey that I've had over the last few years, once I started awakening and com coming into my own power and becoming my own being, other beings took notice of that and the first thing they wanted to do was to take me and manipulate me to make sure that when I speak, I wouldn't speak the universal truth, because really there is only one truth. I know all truths are relative, people say, but only small truths are relatives. Are relative. There, there is only one universal truth and uh, as to what's going on. So that is what the controlling factions, if you want to put it that way, don't want you to achieve and to know and to understand. So the other thing is this knowledge I'm sharing with you here today is not anything new to any of you. You will know everything that I share with you. It's just you've forgotten it. So all, really all I'm doing is providing a trigger here for you to re-remember because all of this knowledge is inside of you. Everybody's got it. You've just forgotten it because that's part of the separation journey. But now we're at the time in the cycle where it's, it's time for us to re-remember who we truly are deep down inside and why we came here and where we all come from and where we're all headed. And that's what I'll explain here today. The second part of the talk, I will get into what we call the grand deception. Um, it's really profound. The magnitude of it is really great. The what is about to be played out here on the planet now is quite um, a Hollywood blockbuster theme, it really is. Um, it is profound what's about to take place. And my objective here today is to inform people with my experiences so they have a point of reference, you know. The more points of reference you have, the greater your ability to make better decisions for yourselves. Okay, so this is all about empowering you with knowledge, with understanding, with perspective. And the third part, I'll do a little bit of numbers. I'm not going to get into the numbers too much today, but they are really profound. Um, and then we'll have lots of question time as well in the third part. Okay, so that's the structure of today. Um, so the first part will go for about an hour, maybe a little bit more. Alright, so what I discovered when I went through the dimensions of the universe was, oh, and I will just say one more thing, and the beings that, that tried to manipulate me, I'm, I know you're all aware of a group called the Galactic Federation of Light. Now in 2004 I did a series of of lectures and that video footage has been doing the rounds on the internet as many of you are aware and I will explain exactly who the Galactic Federation of Light are because there's the real light and then there's the false light and what we are about to experience on this planet and it's already happening is the false light. Um, we've got to get through that first to get to the true light. And we all wanted this experience. It's like a test. It's, it's, it's like an in, everybody incarnated at this time to achieve this graduation process if you wanted it. So this is going to filter out who's really connected to the core of the universe and who's not. And whoever decides to go on their ships when they turn up, that there's no right and wrong. Okay? The, that is the right journey for each person that goes on those ships. 
It just means they wish to stay here a little bit longer. Not here on this planet, but in the lower universes a little bit longer. And they'll go through in the next cycle. If I don't go through that one, I'll go through on the next one. So there's no right and wrong. It's just what's appropriate for each person. So there's no judgment here in that way, okay? And I went through this model of the universe in 2004 and that structure that I drew is a replica of the real universe. So I was being manipulated and I couldn't express myself properly. So now I'll, I'll draw that universal structure again and there may be some similarities but I'll just explain the differences too. So let's say here on Earth, as you know, we've all been in what we refer to as the third dimension, okay? And I'll put a line there because it blends in but you know, it's, there are lines. That, above that we've got the fourth dimension. Now the fourth dimension in physical size is the largest that exists in actual physical size because of the amount of separation that takes place. Okay, but this area is what's deemed the zone of free will. Okay? Then we have a thick universal membrane between the fourth and the fifth. Now, the reason that was created was for protection on a universal level. It's part of the divine plan. It's part of the, the creation structure. Because evil does not exist above here. So evil only exists what you call evil. It's the concept, right? I'm just using our labels that we're familiar with. Of evil only exists below this level. Okay? Above here, this is what's known as heaven. This is what you call heaven. In religious terms, in what, what you experience here on this level, the level of life here is so beautiful. Everything's in harmony. Okay? It is amazing. Now this, this realm, the fifth dimension, exists on this planet too. And you know it as Avalon, or Shambhala, or Shangri-La. It's got lots of names. Okay? Then we have the sixth. Seventh. Between the seventh and the eighth there's another universal membrane. And we have the ninth. Then it goes the tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and thirteenth. Okay? So, these are the ones you really want to know about. And I'll explain that why. So, when I went up, I experienced the whole lot. And then I came back down. And what I discovered was that all these dimensional levels is what we refer to as creation. From, from inside this universe, universe, one verse, right? We think that that's creation, as from your perspective here, but it's not. Life is infinite. There's no end to it, as far as I can perceive. Even from right up the top dimensions, from up there, I couldn't perceive the end to life. It goes on and on and on. So, what I want to share with you is that this is what we call God. It's a being. You know, everything is a being, right? The planet is a being, the galaxies are being, the trees are being. This rock is a being. It's consciousness experiencing itself, manifesting itself as such. Okay? Everything is life. So, this universe we are inside of is a being. And I'm here to tell you that there is life beyond God. So, this is the being and the creator of this universe in all its dimensional levels, and that's what we know as God. It's a being. But there is life beyond that. Now, remember, you know all this inside of you, so I'm not telling you anything new, I'm just helping you to re-remember, that's all. That's all I'm doing here. Okay? Now, Think of yourselves beyond, because if this is here, I want you to know that you also exist beyond God. And I want you to know that each and every one of you are gods in your own right. 
Okay, Buddha and Jesus and Krishna, everyone says, know ye not gods, you are gods. It doesn't mean you are God of this universe. What they're truly saying is you are gods of your own universes. But what you have done is you have come inside this universe to experience life in this way, in this construct. This is what we refer to as a waveform universe. Okay? Light. Frequency. Polarity. Okay? When you get to these higher realms, what, what, don't forget this is heaven compared to all this stuff down here. People think that's the light of God, you've reached God, heaven, it's all over. No way, it goes on and on, right? So each and every one of you are gods in your own right, but your construct, the way your universe is constructed is not like this one. This is unique. And think of us all on the God level, right? So we're all hanging out, each one of us are gods, got your own universe happening. And so this God starts expressing itself in a new way, right? And everyone goes, now that's cool. That is cool. I want me some of that. I want me some of that. So God said, if you guys want to learn how to be like me, then I'm going to come up and formulate something so you can learn how to be like me. So God created what's called the grand creation, the divine plan, the will of God. Okay? And created a formula for everyone to enter inside that being and experience life in waveform structure. Now, where you all entered this universe is here on the ninth dimension. This is what is considered the nursery, don't know about my spelling, of the souls. Everybody enters on this level. It's the nursery of the souls. It's where everybody first experiences waveform, or light, the light of God. And everybody comes in and acclimatizes on that level. From there begins the journey. And you go into the eighth dimension. This is where you function on your own, but as pure energy. It's no physical form, it's just pure energy. And then once, just imagine now none of this exists yet, okay? You've just entered and you're experiencing yourself on your own because you're held here in a, in a stasis, okay? And this is your soul. Soul is the highest form of ego in existence. Everybody thinks here on earth, ego, everything just outside of that, no ego. That's not true. Okay? You have ego on every single level, all the way up to your soul. Your soul, your, your I am presence, what we call the I am presence, the highest connection you have with God, you are still your own identity. Is that right? You have your own identity apart from the source. It's what makes you you. Okay? Because if you didn't have that individual identity, you would not exist. So, just contemplate that. So, this is the highest form of ego in existence is soul, and that's where it resides. The I am presence. And the I am presence extends itself down into here. Okay, so that, that encapsulates these two dimensional levels. Then, once all possibilities and outcomes were experienced by all of us on these levels, we then said, hey, we want to take this to the next level. This is fun. A lot of people are having fun. This is a good ride. So God said, hang on, because the next level from here, if you want to take this journey, it's, it's pretty full on. It's exhilarating. It's fun, but it's full on. So let me just create a huge void as a protective membrane for me because I know what's coming. Because don't forget, I know me, and you want to be like me, then look out because there's traps involved with being me, being like me. So everyone then went, yeah, we want some of that, and extended themselves down. And that is the highest level of physical structure, is the seventh dimension. 
Like, can you, you, you if they turned up here, like, I mean, a being from here turns up now on Earth when it was, it was in the third dimension, you just see a being of light. Okay, because it's vibrating higher than this frequency. Okay? So, be aware of that. It turns up and it looks beautiful and it's vibrating light. Be aware of it. Just doesn't mean it's, it's, it's a pure loving being just because it does that. So, once all possibilities and outcomes, because that was a big rush, going from pure energy to physical structure was a really huge rush for everybody. Everyone loved it. And once all, all possibilities and outcomes were experienced there, everyone said, right, we're going to take this to the next level. And so, down again. And then, same again, and then got to the fifth dimension. But once the lower vibrations of the fifth were begun to experience, there were major differences of opinion that occurred between beings. There was still no killing or death or destruction or anything like that, but we're talking major differences of opinion. And so the polarity started becoming really extreme. Beings started not liking other beings. Beings started wanting to control other beings. And it's like, wait a minute, this ain't right. But when I say control, it's nothing like, you know, control here. I mean, don't forget this is heaven. But I remember in scriptures and that they talk about the angels had a war in heaven and all that. It's just differences of opinion. Okay? So what God did was said, the next journey down into the lower vibrations is going to be so profound and so traumatic that once you enter that, there's only going to be one way out. One way out. If whoever wants to play this game, whoever wants to go on this roller coaster ride, I'm not stopping that roller coaster. Okay? Once you're on that ride, you're in it for the long haul. And that's what you've all chosen. Okay? So, a being popped up. Because the way God operates is who wants to manage this? Who wants to run that? Who wants to be a part of it? So, it's a participatory process. Okay? So, this being puts its hand up and says, I want to run one side of polarity. And I want it to be really full on. I want a being to be able to destroy another being. So let's make it really exhilarating, really intense, really exciting. And that's the being that you know as Lucifer. Okay? So, in my other 2004 presentation, I said that Lucifer and Michael started up here. But that's not true. That was where I was being manipulated. Okay? It starts here, and this is what I'm here to say today, is that that whole structure of the universe has been replicated down here in the lower universes by beings of a much lower order, something to be very, very wary of. Okay, so this is where the division starts between dark and light. And that version of light is not what you think either. That's conditional love. Conditions apply without love. You do as I say, and I'll be nice to you, but if you cross my path, you better look out. I'll take you out. That's conditional love. Okay? All right? As long as you do as I say, I'll be good to you. It's imperialism. Okay? So... This is the Lucifer energy here, and this is the Michael energy here. So you can see the difference is quite big. One, this is what they do. They, this group of beings go around and brainwash everybody, and I'm talking star systems out there. This is happening on galactic level, not just here on Earth, as above, so below, you know. You've got to understand that the brainwashing and the manipulation happens on a galactic level as well. And there's a lot of ETs, which I'll talk a lot about in the second part, that are in communication with our governments here on Earth who belong to this structure, who are brainwashed. They, you know, they, like, has anyone ever spoken to a religious fanatic? Okay, everyone, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah. So they truly believe, like they truly believe. And you can open up some of these books in the New Age movement and you can read them and the channelings and everything. 
and you can feel that there's a real genuine authenticity about what that person is saying because they truly believe. The ETs that come and tell people and give them information, they truly believe. They're brainwashed too. They've been sucked into this empire. I learned that the hard way, okay? I went through the humiliation, the shame. I've stood up and I've said things, and I know I've said things in the past, and they haven't eventuated, and they haven't been true, and they haven't been right. But that's, I'm having this journey so you can all learn from. So I can stand up here and speak with authority and say, I've lived this stuff. I've been deceived by them. I have been taken by them. I have even been tortured by them. These beings are not what they seem. You've got, I'll get into that later, okay? All right. Now, once we got to this point here, this is what we think is the zone of free will. Okay, now that's really important that I said think is the zone of free will because this part of you here, what we refer to as the higher self, which spans these three, and you can be omnipresent here, you can be in many places at once, right? The higher self, down here you organised your whole journey down in these lower universes. And we're talking, some people have been down here for eons of time. I've talked to beings who have been here from the beginning, when they were first created. Earth time, trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions times trillions, billion years ago, Earth time equivalent. Okay? It's been a really long time. And a lot of people, you see it in their eyes, they're tired. I've had enough. I want to go home. And it's true, a lot of us feel that way, don't we? We've had enough. We want to go home, yeah. Yeah. Some of us haven't been down here for this long, and they're freaked out too, because the, the, the way life is down here in these lower vibrations is just too much. You don't like it at all. They haven't been down here long, and they're not used to all the, the bad things that go on down here. That's what was created. And it was a journey into vast separation. Vast separation. Never experienced before. Now here's another big surprise for you. Each one of you who is incarnated on Earth here is actually a galaxy. Sounds pretty amazing, doesn't it? That is how beautiful each and every one of you are. All the beings that are incarnated on here on Earth at the, at the time are also galaxies. You, you, really, people will say, oh, there's probably about two billion galaxies in existence. Crap, there's a lot more than that. There's trillions of galaxies in existence in these lower universes. And there's more than that too. So you are all co-creators already. Because the way God operates, you come down here, you take responsibility. It's not like we have kings and queens in our world here, where well, they do take a fair bit of responsibility, but when you're a king and a queen out there, the way we do it properly is when you manifest a galaxy, when you want to become a king or a queen of a galaxy, and that's just labels, king, queen, it's just to get the, the concept with you. Your energy stream of your being goes into manifesting that galaxy and your energy stream of your being manifests all the planets, right? Is a foundation for all the planets because other beings come into your galaxy and experience the way your galaxy vibrates and they manifest themselves as a planet and a star and it's just multi-layered like that. We all go inside each other and experience each other in the different ways we, we express one another, okay? So we're more interconnected than you can possibly imagine. Everyone says, yeah, we're all one, it's all beautiful and everything. Wow, you know? You, you have people that you fight with, you can understand that you're sorting out karma because you two were two galaxies at war on another level way back when. And you're sorting out all that karma. It, it, it goes on and on and on. It's really expansive. So, 
We took this journey down here and God said, we're going to expand, but then one day we're going to start funneling everything in, into singularity again. And what pops out the other end are creator gods. So you're gods in your own right, but not in this universe. You're in the process of becoming God. We are gods in the making. Okay? Now you all have your Christ center. Okay? That is the consciousness of this universe. That is a seed that was planted inside of you when you first made contact here. Okay? That Christ center is a seed. So once we went through the journey of expansion and went through all these horrendous wars and exhausted all possibilities and now come on the fourth dimension, a third dimensional paradigm was created. And as we're stepping down, we're getting into a slower waveform. Right? Which means more density as well. So the higher vibration, the lower the vibration, the more density. Molecules vibrate slower, the more dense the matter becomes. God said, right, we're going to start bringing everything back together because this is inside God. And this free will zone, right, people think they got free will, really, because the whole thing was designed down from up here, don't forget that. This higher self aspect of you playing the whole life and the outcome, okay? Think you're roaming this planet with free will, then you've got to think about that, okay? Because once you get in touch with your higher self, you then know, realize and know for sure that we do not have free will down here. We just think that we do. That's an illusion of the lower ego, okay? And it needed to be that way. We need to go through that illusion. Separation, okay? And people don't like that because Everything they do that's bad, they can then no longer blame anybody else but themselves. Okay? They can't blame anybody else. It's nobody's fault but mine. Everything I've done, everything I've been, in all this area here, it's all me. It's all of my own making, of my own doing. So, God then decided, I'm going to take this project on now hands-on and the feminine and the masculine aspects of the Creator decided to manifest themselves as galaxies and they did that and the feminine aspect of the Creator, the Divine Mother, manifested herself as our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy and it is termed as such because of the nurturing of the mother's milk. The male aspect of the universe manifested itself as the, Androm as the Andromedan galaxy. And in Greek, the word andras means husband. And the Andromedan galaxy is the one right next door to ours. So you've got the masculine and the feminine, the divine, sacred couple. Everybody from all these different galaxies, right, then came in to this one galaxy because the call went out. The call went out to all the beings who are ready to return home and make this journey to become a creator god. So all the spiritual hierarchy in all these galaxies worked out which beings were going to represent each galaxy and come into this galaxy. So each star system in this galaxy is a settlement or a condensing down and a representation of a galaxy. So you've gone from a galaxy, compressing it down into one star system. Okay? So we're on the road to compression and more density. From there, everybody came into the galaxy and so now you've got all these differences of separation being compressed into one galaxy. And we had a lot of wars that took place in the galaxy in the beginning because there's a lot of jostling for elbow space and uh, you know, positions of power and what have you. And it was a pretty painful time. But then it got to the point where it had to be compressed down to the next level again. And, and the universal consciousness and its masculine and feminine then said, right, we are going to take 
control of this first hand again, and we're going to manifest ourselves as a star system. And so the male aspect manifested itself as the Orion League. Okay? And in Egyptian mythology, that is Osiris, or the hunter. Okay? Which is really another aspect of this guy anyway. Remember, we're talking about the universal creator. Okay? That's what this represents too, that picture there. Okay? So, and the feminine manifested herself as Cirrus, which is also known as Isis. And they've got other names in other cultures. I'm just sharing the ones I'm familiar with, okay? Every culture has this knowledge hidden in it. Now, what took place in Orion was so profound was the masculine energy compressing itself right in. So all the warring, all the controlling energies of that masculine energy was played out in what we call the Orion Wars. And that's what the Star Wars series is all about. That energy. It was one of the most painful and horrific times ever. Because it really needed to be sorted out once and for all. Of course it's still in the process of happening as you're well aware. But a big chunk of it was transmuted in the Orion League through that, that era. And it was a very painful time and I've spoken to people and heard people talk about their memories of the Orion Wars. The, the deprivation of freedom and, and the tortures and what took place in the technology that was used to hurt people in that era was, there are no words to describe how horrific that was. So, that is why we have in Egypt the three pyramids. Because they are a fractal of the Orion's belt and Osiris came to this planet 12, a bit over 12 and a half thousand years ago as Ra and built those pyramids to anchor that masculine energy into this plane. That's what those pyramids do. You'll hear all sorts of stories about those pyramids. But they anchor the male energies into the earth plane. All that war, all that control, all that horrendous energy, because what was happening was masculine and feminine needed to go to the next level. And they manifested themselves as our sun, which is known as Horus, and as Earth, which is known as Hathor. Okay, in the Egyptian pantheon. Now you can pick up a book to, in today's world, you go to the library or whatever, pick up a book, they won't tell you that Hathor was the embodiment of Mother Earth. They won't tell you that. Because that's, that's a secret, because you know, we've got to suppress the feminine, got to suppress the truth. Okay, so, again, I'm, I'm coming from a place like, everything I share with you here today, you do with as you will, okay? Um, if you don't accept anything I say, I'm at peace with that. But I'm not going to sit here and tiptoe through the tulips with you. I'm not going to sit here and express myself in such a fragile way that I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I truly don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but if I say something that nudges your belief system, then I'm sorry about that because we're right at the business end of the cycle and, and the truth needs to be shared. And I'll, I'll just lay my cards on the table. So, um, In the pantheon, Osiris and Isis come together and have a son called Horus, okay? And that is the son. Jesus Christ Son of God. Horus and Jesus are the one being. Okay? She, mother, uh, the Divine Mother manifests us all as the earth because, and this is the Adam and Eve and the serpent business with God. You are taught that that Eve was seduced by the serpent 
and fell into a lower vibration. That is the biggest load of cod. They formulated a plan together. See, that other story gets told to once again undermine the feminine, to show her has, that she's weak, that she's easily conned, and it just takes away the real hero in all of this. Because this guy here, he's getting a lot of attention, right? But the real one, when he comes along, he's going to tell you who the real hero is. He's going to tell you that divine feminine is the real hero in all of this. Because she manifested herself as a planet that was going to see the very last vestiges of this plan play itself out. She volunteered to manifest herself into a planetary body where everyone can incarnate on. She volunteered to be raped, to be pillaged, to be plundered, to be tortured, to be poisoned, to be beaten. And not for a short period of time, not just for a few thousand years. This has been going on for millions of years. So if any big fellow wants to stand up in front of me and talk tough, I'll tell you who's the toughest of them all. That's the Divine Mother. That's the Divine Feminine. There is no other being in this universe that is as courageous, that is as strong, that is as nurturing, that is as unconditional loving as that woman, as the Divine Mother. She's my hero because I know the magnitude of her journey. And I assure you over the next few years, as you awaken and you reconnect with your true heart, your Christ center, that you will come to know this. And I'm not standing up here preaching. You all know this already. You've just forgotten. And you will automatically come to know this over the next few years. I assure you of that. She's the real hero. So, the pyramids anchor that masculine energy into this earth plane. That's what needed to happen. So we can play all this crap out. And I've got this word written up here, apocalypse. And you look up the dictionary, it says the revealing of the truth. The word is words put together. Apo, kali, psihi which means, as I've written, from the good spirit. So another part of the manipulation is to get you to fear that word. Now the controllers fear that word. They are scared. My goodness, are they scared. Because when this happens, when the truth and the knowledge comes from the good spirit, it's game over. It's game over for them. So when you all awaken now and understand the real truth of what's going on here, which you all will, don't take my word for it. Like I say, you're going to know this for yourselves. It's, it's game over for them. And that is the true meaning behind this word. Okay? They just love to taint things with their brushes, you know? So, it's compression from expansion of the lower universes down to two galaxies, down to two star systems down to one singular star system in a planetary body. That's the journey we've all taken. And where are we headed? This is, that's where you come from. You're all, everyone's an ET. We're all in this generic form called the human embodiment. Oh, and that's another thing I wanted to share with you. People say to me, but I don't have this connection with the Divine Mother. I'm not, I don't feel her. You are so intimately connected with her. I'll run this as an example for you. In, in the church they hold up, and I've been Christian Greek Orthodox by the way, uh, but I'm into Christianity, I'm not into churchianity. There's a big difference between the two. So they hold up the wafer and they go, this is the body of the Christ and the wine is the blood of the Christ. And they go through this thing called communion. Well first of all, where did that wafer come from? It came from the earth. It was grown from wheat, comes from the earth. Where'd the wine come from? It comes from grapes, it was grown from the earth. Everything you eat, you know, you, people give thanks around the table. What do they give thanks to? A male God. Everything you consume, 
the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, everything comes from Mother Earth. Your body is made up of the organic matter of the Earth. That's how intimately connected you are to her. You're inside that body which is of the Earth, of the Divine Mother. And people don't get it. People don't understand how closely and how intimate that relationship is. Um, the ascension process is taking us to a level, you see the next step of the ascension process means we go to the fifth dimension on Mother Earth and then from there we prepare for ascension. And once we walk through those doorways into the fifth dimension, that's where our true brothers and sisters from the stars will come and meet us on that level. Because we've said goodbye to all of them on this level. They know we're not going to see them again. That's a lot of the pain and the yearning that you, when you look at the stars that you feel this yearning for. Okay? This isn't my home. I come from out there somewhere. So many people I talk to have those experiences. We've said goodbye to that forever. For those who go through. We come onto the earth to go through the fifth dimension on the earth. Now, the ships that turned up on the fifth dimension are the construct is a light body. It's, it's all very different. Life there is very, very different, okay? And not all beings choose to actually travel on ships and anything anyway. They just use their consciousness. But um, the celebrations that took place, the tears of joy that I saw in everyone's faces, and we're all going to naturally gravitate to our twin flames. That's another thing I'm going to be talking about, sacred, divine sacred union. But what people don't understand is this whole ecosystem on the earth has to go. A lot of people think ascension is, all right, we're just going to slowly merge into newer technologies and we're going to go back to nature and everything's going to be beautiful. Hang on a minute. How can you have a bunch of enlightened beings walking a planetary body while all around them there's death and destruction. Lions eat zebras. Has anyone ever seen a cat play with a mouse? Viruses, bacteria. Everything consumes everything else. What people don't understand is this whole ecosystem has to go as well. The whole thing has to go. It, it's a contradictory situation to have a planet full of enlightened beings while they're inside an environment which is totally, totally barbaric around them. It, it makes no sense. Just looking at it from a sensible point of view. So the concept of this planet turning into a star makes perfect sense when you understand the whole process. When you look at it from the bigger picture and you go, oh, okay, so the whole environment has to change as well. And that's why it's going to become a star. The whole outer crust of this earth is going to melt away. And here's the message I have for the ruling elite. If you think you can build underground bases and if you think you're going to be safe, you are deluding yourselves. You are absolutely kidding yourselves. And the extraterrestrials that you are in contact with at this time are lying to you. And I mean lying. They have lied to me, they have taken me, they have tortured me, and they are not what they seem. Now, who and what is the Galactic Federation of Light? The Galactic Federation of Light originates its headquarters. Now you hear all sorts of stories, Lyra, this, that and the other, is in Orion. They come from a star, there's one of the belt stars, as seen here from the southern hemisphere, it's on this one here, and it's Al-Nitak. 
That's the star where they come from. They come from a planet called Despora. That's what they call it. They call it Despora. That's the equivalent in our English language. Now, I'm sure you've heard that term in some religions here on the planet too. Now, the reason they call it Despora is because it comes from a Greek word which means Viaphora, which means the ones who are separate from the rest. It means the ones who are the chosen ones, the enlightened ones. And they are a blonde-haired, blue-eyed race, and I'm not being racist because there are a lot of beautiful blonde-haired, blue-eyed races out there, but these beings are so beautiful, so angelic looking, and so incredibly evil. It's the way they handle you and the things that they do to you, it's like you can come across the reptilians, and these were all reptilians. These beings have evolved. They have changed physical containers. They no longer look reptilian. But when you have the ability to see properly, when you can see properly, you see through the facade, they are not what they seem. And they have this ability to connect with you mentally, telepathically. Telep telepathy is mental, right? The fourth dimension is the mental dimension. And what they do simultaneously is they have technology and they have the ability to stroke your central nervous system, giving you the sensation of euphoria. And there's channelers all around the world who have fallen victim to these beings. And it's happening. I see it everywhere. I've dealt with these beings time and time again. I'm part of what's called the Council of Light, the Galactic Council. There are many here on the planet. I'm not saying this to make myself sound fantastic because it's all about responsibility. It's got nothing to do with ego, fame, fortune, nothing to do with that. It's all about responsibility. And you've all been put through the big test and I'm here to tell you that there is no way in hell that they're going to win. It's over. It's finished. It was finished a long time ago. It's not about winning and losing. It's about the evolutionary process of the universe. Now these beings are called the Nordics from Orion. Uh, our governments have been in contact with these beings for a very long time. They like to build their underground bases. They get told to build their underground bases. Now you hear the people talking about the greys. Well, they are all in collaboration, even though they're factional and they fight and do all this sort of stuff, they all belong to this one big empire which spans the top, starts here and goes all the way down. And that is what we call on the planet the Galactic Federation of Light. Because I was so closely aligned, this is what they do, they replicate. And because I'm here from the Galactic Council of Light, if you want to call it that, they were able to manipulate me. I've been implant after implant, they threw everything at me. Mind control programs. They plug holograms into you. I've had holograms run through my system because what they're trying to do with that is break me and they're trying to break that barrier between my being here and my being there. So when they, they try to crack it, they're trying to drive a wedge through that barrier within yourself, because we've all got that. That's, just, that's the barrier between your, your lower being and your higher self. And they have tortured me with holograms. And it reaches so deep inside of you, the way they use this technology. It is horrendous. But here I am. So, I'm sharing this personal intimate stuff and to live a life, to try and function, not to be able to share it with your family. Oh, it's been a hard road. Okay? And that's why when I stand up here and I talk about this stuff, I'm telling you I know what I'm talking about. 
they have amassed a great empire. At the top of that empire, there's two beings that run the whole show. They are both originally, and still are at the core, crocodilian reptilians. For those who don't know about this stuff, look at the ancient Sumer statues and you'll see the, the snouts. Look at the Egyptian hieroglyphs, you'll see crocodiles in it. They're everywhere, okay? It's all on it. You've just got to go looking for them in the right places. It's, it's nothing new. They have amassed such a great empire that it spans all the dimensional levels. Well, you see, that's a dimensional level. These are really octaves, but they sell it like it's a dimensional level. I've heard speakers on this planet talking about six, seventh dimensional Dracos. I've heard them talking about, oh, these beings came in from the 12th dimension. Well, no, they couldn't have because everyone came in from the ninth dimension as a soul. So there's no way to, you know, beings can come in from the 12th. It's impossible. So what they've done is they've replicated the whole dimensional structure of the universe down here in the lower universes. And these beings play God. Okay, so my 2004 presentation was taking my knowledge and they were assimilating me into their structure. That's what they did. And I'm here to tell you that they can only go to here. That's it. So really, all they are are big fish in a small pond. That's all they are. And they're misguided, frightened little creatures. And that's all they are, at the end of the day. Now, I have a great deal of respect for them, having said all that. Because I respect all life. But I, call to call, I have to call a spade a spade. Okay? You've got to be real about things in life. You can't live in a la-la land the whole time. Not in this reality, you can't. So the reality is, these guys are coming. They're already here, but they're about to present themselves to you. When these beings turn up, what their objective is, is to stop as many people from staying on this planet and walking through those dimensional doorways to the true path of ascension. They are going to come here and they are going to sell everyone, all of you, their version of ascension. They have created a false light body, but it only goes to there. So when you're down here in these vibrations, when you come across a being up in the higher reaches of their empire, you think you're talking to an ascended master or an angelic being. And you all wanted to have that experience, that's why you're here right now. Don't forget that, right? So take responsibility for it, don't blame everybody else and all that business. So, they are going to sell love better than a US election campaign. I'm telling you, all the whistles and bells, all the lights and the glory, and they are going to talk it up like anything. Now, they need to do that because they need to win the hearts and the minds of the people in order to seduce them onto their ships, as many people as possible, because these are the guys, and even though they won't say it, they're the ones that are feeding off the worship. And these beings have real power. I've experienced it. Okay? I've experienced their power. What they can do to you is amazing. But the moment my higher being stepped in, pfft, nothing. They've got nothing on you when, you when you just use that part of your being, let alone the rest of it. Okay? You've got to realise, yeah, I'm talking, they're really powerful, they're, they've got amazing powers of control and everything, but at the same time realise that the moment you switch a bit of that power on, they're nothing. They're, they're like a ant compared to an elephant just from you using vibra vibratory levels from here onto them, down here. Okay? So, they're on their way. They're already here. They're teaching the, the government behind the scenes to build all these underground bases. Now, you guys, I've just got to look at the camera for a minute, you guys who are building the underground bases on this earth, you are the suckers. Okay? You are the ones who have been taken for a big ride because they give you these special passes and you think you're one of the chosen ones, one of the elite, you see. And you're being put into these underground bases. So when the time comes 
and the crust melts away with an internal fire coming out from the centre of, of the core of this earth, you are going to perish. So, these Orion Nordics, or P-52s, as they call them around Area 51 or whatever, they're codes for them. You know, the shadow government has all these codes. They are lying to you. They are lying to you through the teeth. And what they did is they sent, they first sent lower vibratory beings here. Beings with technology, which you know as the greys. See, this empire has got incredible resources at its, at its disposal. Remember, we're talking hundreds, maybe thousands of star nations that have been indoctrinated into this empire. So these greys that have come here, they've been coming here sent, they're sent first because they are master geneticists, fantastic with technology, fantastic with mind control programs, and they are doing the job that they need to do first before they send these other guys in to do their bit. It's all part of a master plan. And I'll tell you, they do have, they are factional, they have different cultural philosophies, yes they do. But I assure you, with every ounce and fabric of my being, that they are collaborating behind the scenes in the greater empire. You are being conned. You are being so conned. And it's never too late to relinquish your thirst for control and power and turn yourselves around. It's never too late. You'll be given every opportunity to do that. Now, this information I'm providing here today a lot of people already know, but the magnitude of it I don't feel is known because I've seen what's going on around the internet and the world and what people have to say. Not a lot, but bits and pieces here and there, and I don't think they've grasped the whole magnitude of it, the big picture. And I know that over the next few years there's going to be more and more and more who are going to start coming out and saying it. There is. Because, like I said, it's time for the truth to come out and the truth to be revealed. The journey we have taken here to come to planet Earth and to be in this generic form, which we call human form, human, God, godly man, our genetics, the codes, like the codes in your body, for example, are all the codes of the universe are contained in that body. You've got it, you've got it, you've got it, we've all got it. That's why it's generic. Okay? We are essentially the most powerful in the universe. And all this manipulation that's been taking place is because these beings have gone absolutely berserk of the fact, how could you possibly have beings that are more powerful than us? No way. We are not going to let that happen. We are the masters. We are the ones in control here. How dare they? So these beings are going to come here and they're going to go, Oh, you poor humans. Look at you. You will fight against one another. You will kill each other. You're not evolved. But they're not telling you that they're manifesting this behind the scenes. They're the ones pulling the strings. They're the ones that create the division. They're the ones that create the war. They're the ones that have been allowed to come here and manifest things as they are. So, when the end comes, they can come here and say this to you. And it's so important to understand how powerful you are. You hold all the codes in the universe inside of you. Human means God-man of godly mind. We're not human yet. We're about to become human. We're still going through the Homo sapien stuff, right? And Homo sapien, what's that? These other beings... Right? These other beings that want to destroy the planet, want to mine her body for resources and everything, that are in what we call human form, no mate, they are homo sapiens, animal consciousness. Because it's not humane to do that to Mother Earth. 
the humane thing to do would to be work with nature, to, to share with one another, to love one another, to nurture one another. That is what it means to be a humane being. Now to be a homo sapien, what does that mean? That's two Greek words. Homos means earth. And sapio in Greek means rotten. So, these beings who want to remain with the lower animal consciousness of the homo sapien will turn this earth rotten. And that is exactly what they have done. So here we have this incredible empire and you've got the Jesus of the church, not the real Jesus, the Jesus of the church, which is a personality and a character that's been portrayed to the masses. Okay? When everyone's in church and they're praying and they're projecting and you see it in the evangelistic churches and they're singing their songs and you know you see them and the tears are streaming down and if you know the power of intention we have, can you imagine how much energy is being projected out? And these beings are just going, thank you very much. And that is why when they have a planetary race of the most powerful beings in the universe worshipping them, they have never, ever, ever been fed so much power in all of existence. And it is like a drug for them. Because they are who they are because of that worship. If everybody stopped worshipping and started understanding and respecting instead, then all of that will go away. So they're coming to harvest as much of their human herd, and this is their terminology, that's how they said it to me, their human herd as possible because they need worship. They need it. They can't be who they are without it. For them to lose the level of power they have now is unthinkable. It's death to them. Now, over the next few years, this is all going to play out. They will reveal themselves. It's going to be all about love. And all I want to share with you is please, from my heart, please be careful. But at the end of the day, whatever path you choose is right for you. If you want to get on those ships, if you think, oh no, what George said that day and all that, no, nah, I don't resonate with that, and you want to get on those ships, then go on those ships because that is your journey. If, if it's destined for you to stay in the lower years longer, then stay longer. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Okay? You can hang out down here a bit longer and go through the arduous process a bit longer if you like. It just means you're not ready to, to get it come out. It's like a party, you know. It's like some people are at a party and then the parents come home and they say, oh, you've got to wind up the party now. Oh, but mum, but dad, I'm having a good time. I don't want the party to end. And there's a whole lot of beings that just don't want it to happen. And they will kick and scream and throw tantrums and do everything possible to hang on to this reality and to the control and to the seduction and to the torture and to everything that's going on here because they don't want their party to end. They're high and mighty sitting at the top, sucking off the resources of the most powerful beings in the universe. And they're on such a big ego trip because they're like, ha, here's God created a, a godly being and look what we've done to it. So we're the real gods. We're the real gods. Look what we've done. But they've forgotten. They've forgotten about the contract way back when. We will let you come here and do this. Because we need to create an environment for people to come and incarnate and dissolve their karma and be tested right to the nth degree to see who's going to make it through and who's not. Now, these Nordics are very clever. Like I said, they're, they're, the, the way they play with their words, oh, I've read some stuff, new agey stuff, it's awesome had me going for a while there too. But after a while you start to see through it. I've got friends that just look at it and go, oh, I don't know. Just the, the, the energy coming off the page, the words written on there. You get to the point, you just feel it straight away. You can read two sentences into it and you go, uh-uh, no thanks. I've got friends who are just told, oh, read this, it comes from this. And my friend goes, nah, don't want to read it. 
don't want to look at a video, don't need to. Just don't need to. Because that being in its heart already knows. Already knows. Doesn't even have to look at it. No thanks. Yeah. Now, what the Orion Nordics are saying now is they are saying to the ruling elite and the shadow government and all the black ops and all that stuff that's going on behind the scenes, we are your future. We have come from your future and we're here to help you. And by doing that, they undermine straight away your validity, your sense of self-worth. It's a good con. I mean, if you needed to approach a planet, you've got to put yourselves in their shoes, you see. If you needed to approach a planetary population, what would you do? You know, what would you do? What would you do? If you put yourself in their shoes, we are your future. So it's like, oh, good little children. We're so much more involved than you are. Listen to us. We will look after you. What a con. And the amount of money, and where that money comes from, my goodness, I won't go into it. The amount of money that has been spent on these projects that these beings, see what they do is they come here and they get into the ruling elite of the planet and into their heads and, and they keep them busy. You need to create this project and this and, oh, we'll teach you about wormholes. Here, look at this technology. And, and the scientists are like, wow, that's amazing. And they are just whoosh, tunnel vision. They, they're like kept in this little paradigm on the planet, you know? It's little circles. So you've got this big planet, and these beings are just kept in this little paradigm, right? To, to give it to you visually, right? Kept busy. Got right. We've got these guys working on that project there. And then what they do is they sort these people out. They feel them out. Who's worthy? Who's not? Who knows? Who can see? Who susses us out? Who's conforming to our agenda? and who's not conforming to our agenda. So they've got all these projects, scientific projects, with all this high-tech stuff, because don't forget, they deprived us all these hundreds of years. They're the ones that plunged everybody down into the dark ages, stripped everything away, tried to hide all the ancient technologies. Like, I know how we built the pyramids, I was there. We just went up to the rocks, we asked the rocks, consciousness, because each mountain is a being, right, as well, and you ask, would you like to be a part of this project, and the rock goes, yes I would. Some say, no, it's not my path. And the rocks divide themselves into whatever amount of molecular structure you require. Because you tell it, this is what I want to do, do you want to be a part of it? So you work with nature, you're one with life. And then you project an energy resonance into that rock and you levitate it. You alter the molecular structure. The thing floats. It's easy. Okay? Well, I can't do it right now, obviously, because I'm still on, on limited consciousness. But I'm reliving what I did back then, okay? That's where I'm coming from when I'm talking about this. It was easy back then. It's just subtlest when you do these things when you're in that state of being. And you just levitate the rocks. And you just float them, you push it with a little pinky, right? And then you put it in a position and you just slowly redensify that rock and the rock just slowly comes down and moulds itself into place. That's why you can't even get a bit of paper between the rocks and the pyramids. Everything's just so perfect. And that's why when monuments are built this way, they stand the test of time. And the Templars did a project. They went to a mountainside and they got all the rocks from the bottom up Okay? And all the rocks they took from the top first, they put aside, and the rocks that were at the bottom of the cliff face, or the quarry, they put at the bottom of the building. And they built two churches side by side. And then they restructured the rocks the same way they got it from the hillside. And then they built another one, just here and there. We'll use this rock, then we'll use that rock. 
And after 200 years, that, that one started to crumble, and that one is still standing today perfect. Because you're still maintaining the energy patterns, the life force energy through that rock. And that's why the pyramids still stand and have stood the test of time. Okay? And in South America, all the monuments, etc., etc. So, be, being bedazzled by technology. So here you have the greys now, who are saying, oh, we come from this timeline from your future. No, they don't. What happened with the original greys, because the story of the greys that they're projecting to the planet now is there was an original race of humanoid beings on a planet that they had nuclear disaster, they went underground, and they came out a few hundred thousand years later, and they chose the path of technology, and they genetically removed emotion, um, everything out of their DNA, because they needed to do that to live in such a confined space. And all their body parts atrophied, and that's why the greys look the way they do. Now, that's the original race that did that. And they, I can tell you, are beautiful beings. They're the ones who originally came here to warn us not to head down the path we're going, because that, and I've met with them personally, and they say, look at me, look at this body. You do not want to end up like me. We have lost our way. We have our connection with the Creator. We are so desperate to return to the Creator. And that is the truth. But what happened is, these guys caught wind of it and thought, oh, we're going to use this. So you've got the greys that have been created by these other beings as their slaves to come and sell you the same story. And I've, I've been abducted by both. Right? Again, I, I'm telling you because I live this stuff. I live it. And I know what it's like to have a machine plugged into you and them trying to turn on this device which sucks your kundalini out of your system. That hurts. That really, really hurts. Right. Now by doing that, they're saying to the ruling elite behind the scenes, oh, this disaster that's coming up, you know, because they've told them there's a big disaster coming because they can see the future right a big disaster coming because of the timeline they say they've come back here and all this sort of they've, they've created this incredible story and they say it's the technology that did it it's the wormholes that did it so we've got to turn off all these devices devices that they used to look into the future um, devices that created wormholes so they can transport from one planetary system to another and they've got all this stuff happening behind the scenes. You wouldn't believe, you know, you take all the science fiction movies in Hollywood, you put them all together, and that ain't the half of it, of what's really going on. Okay? And they are saying that it is a result of the technology that the disaster happens on this planet. What another con. By saying that, they totally take away the power of the consciousness of this planet. Because then they're responsible for what took place here. Do you understand the mind games here? Then they're responsible. It's our technology. We're the ones with the power. We're the ones that did that to that planet. Well, they're crap. Okay? This Divine Mother, if she wanted to, she could crush them in an instant. But she won't do it. But I'm here on behalf of her, sharing the message. She's going to turn into a star. Get yourselves organized. Get yourselves ready, because it's happening. So, having said that the whole ecosystem is going to go and turn into a star, I just want to divert a little bit, change the energy, and read this. Because when I say that you'll know it for yourselves, I want you to know that a lot of people are getting this around the planet. Here's an email I received. What can we do to help this transition of mankind and Earth? That is my question to you. My soul feels a deep sadness these days. When I walk in my woods, I find myself lovingly looking at the trees, the moss and the fern, and I think, how beautiful you are, dear Earth. And all of this will have to go. 
My feelings tell me that ascension is not only a step up into something wonderful, but also a farewell. And in that farewell lies great sadness. And I'll share that with you so you can understand how people all around the world, and that comes from Scandinavia, that one, are getting it. I was at the soccer, my son's soccer match, and a dad walked up to me. He goes, you know what, George? He goes, you see all this? Everything. The buildings, the trees. He goes, I'm going to have to walk away from this one day soon. All of it. And my jaw just went, like, he's just a dad. So, you know, all these people, we, you know, a lot of us think we're on this high spiritual path and everyone's left behind. No. You've got to understand, Joe Blow working in the factory on, you know, putting cars together or whatever, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many people already know this in here, but they just don't say anything. Okay? This isn't, this isn't just little old me standing here making all this up. People are getting it already. Really, truly getting it in here. Not here. Here. Now, the moon. Oh, Planet X and Anarchy. Oh, I keep hearing stories about Anarchy. My goodness, they're so evil. Anunnaki this, it's the Anunnaki, bloody Anunnaki, pardon my language. All right, there's two things going on here. You've got the original Anunnaki, and then you've got an imposter Anunnaki. The original Anunnaki are known as the Shining Ones. You know them as the Chuatha de Danan of the Celts, right? You know them as the Netters of Egypt. They are called the Shining Ones. They are called the Balnapa of the Aborigines. They are called many names. They are the original Shining Ones. They are the management team. And they are known as the Council of Twelve and the Council of Light. When they originally came here and set life up, the imposters caught wind of that and came here and presented themselves as though they were those beings. So after the original embodiments were created for its original purpose, they came along and modified the genetics. And it is not the original Anunnaki who created slaves for mining gold and all that stuff that gets talked about. It was an imposter group that came and did that because the way their propaganda campaigns work is they badmouth the good guys. Okay? And the original Anunnaki with Arn or Anu is this guy here. Different time, different place, different in cultural interpretation. He has come to this planet many times. He's known as Arn, he's known as Anu, um, he's known as Osiris. So Osiris is Arn, his lower aspect is Horus, he's Enki, the equivalent, for all the people who are into that stuff. Um, be careful what you read, because you've got to understand that texts have been manipulated over thousands of years. Be really careful, because people go, oh look, it's written in stone. Well, we didn't have books back then, so they wrote in stone. So who, how do you know a stone tablet wasn't created and a guy... You know, pointing a spear at a guy and says, you're going to write this, or else. Just because it's written in stone doesn't mean it's true. The only real truth you will ever, ever, ever know is in here. I'm standing up here today and I'm talking from here. And I don't care what anyone says about me. Because you will not take away my sovereignty. You will not take away my truth. And I know the truth that's in here is in you, and in you, and in you, and in you. It's everyone. We've all got it. It's just a matter of getting in touch with it. Okay? Mine's been activated because of all my experiences. Soon it's all going to spill into the public arena, and yours will be activated. Yours will just be activated in a different way to the way mine was. That's all. That's all it is. Now, they, when the ships turn up, they're going to have a really intense layer of control. So we're all waiting, right? We're all waiting 
for the ships to turn up to activate everybody. And many will be activated. It'll be the trigger, okay? But you've got to understand the level of control will be more powerful too. It's getting more intense all the time. All your digital plasma screens, whoo, the energy that comes out of those things. I definitely did not go that, that direction. That's crossing the line. When you go from analog to digital, whoa, they've got you good. They've got you real good. When you sit there, you are being programmed constantly by those things. All right? So when the ships turn up, it's going to have a dampening effect. Not as many people that you think would awaken will awaken. You'd think the biggest thing ever happening, ET's turning up, some people will just go, oh yeah, okay. But what about my haircut? What about my GT Monaro? I want to get a set of mags for it, you know? They'll still just continue to have other priorities. For them, so what? A couple of ETs turned up. And you're just going to stand there and go, are you all right? Like, do you understand what this means for humanity and the planet? Come on. And they won't get it. So be patient with them. Just let them be, you know? Okay, we've just got to change tapes again, haven't we? <laughs> Now, here's another clever part of their manipulation. It's just an illusion. This isn't really real. Oh, that one, that one used to just fry my nerves. That used to get me so upset. That is such poison, that concept. That is the philosophy of the graves. Be careful. They're going to say, you're all God. We're all one. This is just an illusion, it's just a dream, it's not really real. Well, if it is, leave. That's what I say to people. I was sitting down having a meal with a guy, he's saying, I'm not really eating this. I go, what? <laughs> oh, excuse, excuse me? Oh, I'm not really eating this, I'm not really here, it's just an illusion. Oh, no. What, what do you do? People like, no. So, why do they say that? Why are they, why are they brainwashing people with those philosophies? Because it totally undermines who you are and why you have chosen to come here. The reason, the purpose, the intention of your existence here on earth, it undermines the whole process of the divine plan. Because they are the powerful ones with their technology. There is no way in hell are they going to accept the fact that you are becoming a God. No way in hell are they going to accept the fact that this planet has power in her own right and is the manifestation of the Divine Mother carrying us all in the womb. No way. No way. So please, when you hear about the now moment, there's a lot of good stuff. The now moment is real, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good stuff in the now moment, teachings. But you don't understand that every philosophy that gets released, then it all begins to get manipulated over time. So be very careful with all these high-end, mind-defending philosophies. Because it's full of it at the moment out there in the world. They're everywhere. Seminars for them, the whole lot. You name it. This is our reality. It's real. You chose to come here. You exist here because you needed to come here and learn. Your soul needs it. That's why you're here. And you're part of a bigger process and you're taking responsibility for everything that you've done, everything that you've been. All your creations, they're all being integrated into oneness and harmony in this lifetime. When I went there and I had my high self come into it, I got up off the table, okay, I know I'm not reading, but, and I was confronted by, eventually, because I went searching and seeking this guy out, uh, like a draconian, and the, the physical appearance was really close to what you call the wraith on Stargate Atlantis, right? It's amazing these people that make movies and they get their information from long flowing hair and they threw everything they had at me and the heat I could feel coming off my body. Remember my great bean came in and I had my protective energy 
through my aura and the heat that I could feel coming off my body. And these beings were running around going crazy because nothing they did, they threw everything at me and I'm still just walking around. I could not believe it. Because that taken me many, many times. And all of a sudden for me to just get up and walk around and they can no longer stop me. That poor people like that freaked me out. So, and, and I walk through walls. You can walk through walls. Remember we can do anything when you're in that state of being. And it's not George here, me George, that did this. George is just a lower aspect of this individual personality for this incarnation. The greater part of me took over and did this. Not another being taking over me, my high self. Okay? So no difference to someone who's going to be in a car accident, but somehow they say, oh, the hand of God reached in and interfered and saved me by a miracle. No. It's not the hand of God, it's your hand. Because it's through your higher being that you connect to God. Okay? So your higher self is always looking after you when it needs to. So, here I am and I'm walking through walls and I'm seeking this guy out and I'm confronted with him on one side of the wall and the walls were like a, like a bathroom. You know, it's translucent but it's not transparent. It had a little wavy sort of appearance to it. It's made from sort of in the And he's defeated. On the other side of the wall, something like that. Long hair just flowing. And I said to him, okay, now do you understand? He said, yes. I said, now I'm going to share with you who you are. And I was able to connect with him and take him back through all the eons of time in the lower universes, everything he's done, everything he's been, and reconnect him from the point in time when he first journeyed into the lower universes. That, what's termed as the fall, which is really the dive, <laughs> okay? No one's been seduced into this journey, you're right? It's another con. When he first chose to come down into the lower universes, and he fell apart. And you guys can do this too, and I'm sure you're doing it out there as well, okay? It's not just me doing this work. Now, they took it to the earth because they wanted to suppress the feminine, they plugged it in to the reproductive cycles of the feminine energy, 28 day cycle. And that's why the circular is orbit, uh, orbit is circular. And that is the mechanical device that they are using to suppress the feminine energy. It is your ball and chain, it is your shackles. The moon is not what it once was. When you're there and you're doing your moon dances once a month, it breaks my heart, because at the moment when you do that, they're manipulating you on this ancient memory, but you are the slaves now worshipping the master. And I'm sorry, part of me is so sorry, because I know so many women feel that connection, that deep connection to the moon, but I cannot possibly end here and tell you anything other but what's really going on. I can't do that. I have to be real. I have to be truthful. I can't tell you what you want to hear. I have to tell you what you desperately need to hear. You have to let go of the moon. And it served an excellent process. Excellent. Because it not only served the feminine in an amazing way, it served us men in an amazing way. The lunatic is in our heads, right? Luna tick. Think about that. It forced us all to dig deep. Without that moon being placed in orbit around the earth, we would never have had the experiences we have had here on this planet in this reality. The moon also pulls the tides, right? Now the ocean, the water, is the emotional body of the feminine. And that's why you have these incredible upheavals emotionally at the time of the ovulation and other times. And that's why men have such a hard time connecting with women with their emotional bodies. Because we don't get the torture, the emotional torture that women are going through. We don't get it. I get it now and still I'm scratching the surface. I've been working with the Divine Feminine so deeply, so incredibly deeply for many years now. And intensely over the last couple of years, oh, as you know, my, my, everything's changed. 
And we, I'm telling you, we have no idea what they're going through. I'm still a kindergartner. The, the fragmentation of the emotional body of a woman is so fragmented, it's in agony. So please, be patient and respect the feminine, your loved ones, understand what you're going through. Now, and when that moon gets taken out of here, for those who are not in the fifth dimension and are still out here in the matrix, when that moon leaves, and I was shown this, I went through it, and probably nowhere near to the degree that women are going to go through this, right? But I lived it. And I felt this incredible pulling coming out of this part of my being, a combination of the solar plexus, the sacral, and the root chakra. It was horrendous. You can physically feel the pulling. And that's what every woman's going to feel. And the emotion that I felt was sobbing tears of joy. Finally, freedom from oppression. Finally. And that's coming. And you will sob tears of joy if you haven't already gone through the high dimension. So, have a think about that. And like I say, all this information that I share, whoever does a little pendulum thing, whatever method you use to clarify truth from fiction, you do it. You go for it. With everything that I've said. Because I know where I'm coming from. Alright, that's the moon. And I want to end that kind of energy in this room. I think I've said enough for that sort of paradigm. So, I think it's time to change the energy patterns and go to something much brighter. Thanks, mate. Now, the ascension process has, like I said, steps to it. We talk about the dimensional doorway. So, you know, what are these dimensional doorways? They are essentially made up of that. As we all know, we were all familiar, familiar with that cycle, with that symbol. And it has something to do with this symbol. Now, I, I put this symbol up in my last talk, and people are wondering, I didn't mention it, and they're wondering, what was that symbol that he drew? Because he didn't tell us what it was, because I talked about the medicine symbol and everything. This was the other symbol. This is the earth, and this is the path that we're on, and we're right about here, at the junction. And you will have three paths to choose from. You will have the path of technology, the technocrats, and all their wonderful technology, amazing stuff, it dazzles everybody. And then you will have the beings of what we refer to as conditional love or the false light. Me, what path am I taking? Well, I'm staying right here on Mother Earth and I'm choosing the middle path. Thank you very much. I ain't going nowhere. So you can go with the greys and all their wonderful technology if you like, like those people are off in Mars already and many more that are going to be going there. And this journey was so horrendous for me because I didn't cope very well with it at all um, because I wasn't as evolved as I am now and uh, I freaked out. It took me a week to get over it to settle down with my energies and I saw spaceships in the skies everywhere and um, people were like zombies just walking. I remember going around shaking, come on. These aren't the real guys, what are you doing? Don't get on board the ships. There were tidal waves coming in, was, I was on a headland. There were ships everywhere. People were just walking in lines to get on board these ships. I like in a trance. Okay? And the energy of the environment at the time was really, really uncomfortable. Okay? And that's what's going to happen to these people. That is their path. And it took me a week to get over it at least. Yeah. Now, you all know that this
is, is perfect balance. And of course, you know, you wipe all that out and you're left with pretty much, right? The fish are crispy, right? Everybody knows that, right? You see it on the stickers on the back of cars, okay? That's where that symbol originally comes from. They just haven't completed the surface. That's all it is. So the people who designed that sticker know originally where it comes from, but for the layman, they haven't got a clue. I think it's got to do with Pisces. The Piscean age. That's what I think it's got to do with. It does, because it happened in that period, but it's not the main reason. The main reason is that the womb of the mother. When we go through the ascension process, everybody, it, and it doesn't matter what relationship you are in, what kind of relationship you are in, it does not matter. There is no judgment here. Okay? What you will naturally want to do inside of yourself is gravitate to your twin flame. And people say to me, well, hang on, I've got past life memories of being a woman when it's a man standing in front of me. And I'm going, well, you as an individual did not have that life. What you're blending with is with your feminine counterpart. People can't grasp the concept, okay, of the fact that as an incarnation here on this planet that they think that there's just this body and there's androgyny. I can tell you I've been to planets where the whole race is androgynous. But only in the physical. Only in the physical. The expression of the being. They're divided into masculine and feminine. Just because the physical hanger says androgyny does not mean that they are androgynous. Far from it. Far from it. It's always got to do with the expression of the being. So it doesn't matter what body they come in. So, you will naturally gravitate because you've got male and female. Christ energy is perfect balance. Okay? You're going to want to do this. It's just gonna, I've had people come to me and say, Man, you know I'm in this relationship, but I can feel this other woman calling me. I can feel it. I can feel it. So deep. And this is what we call divine sacred union. So, you have, remember it's perfect balance. True ascension can only be achieved by the golden mean spiral of the masculine coming together with the golden mean spiral of the feminine coming together in divine sacred union and that is the holy grail. That is the holy grail. And I'm not saying that to undermine any relationship, any marriage, anything like that. It does not undermine that. And that's where the church has gone wrong because on one level they know this. But they've forced it on people to the nth degree. They won't allow people to have relationships and freedom on this world. They won't allow that. Okay? Because they're control freaks. You know that. So like I said, no judgment. Whatever relationship you're in, you will automatically have this awakening take place inside of you. And you'll just know. You'll look in each other's eyes and say, darling, it's time for me to go. And especially when it comes time to walk through those dimensional doorways. And you will happy, each partner will just be happy to go your own separate ways. Now I know that's hard to take for a lot of people. They don't quite get what I'm saying. And a lot of people go, oh, you know, he's talking about the dissolvement of marriage, you know, the sacred thing. Okay? Well, Mary Magdalene and Jesus were two sides of the same flame, no, twin flames. One being. Isis and Osiris. And that's what sister wife thing is all about. Sister wife, what does it mean? When you find your perfect counterpart, that person will be your father, your husband, if you're a woman, will play the role as your father, will play the role as your husband, your lover, your brother, and your son. And vice versa. Your mother, your sister, your daughter, your lover, the whole lot. It is just so beautifully harmonious and counterbalanced. 
Now, I've written that up there too because we see our society all of a sudden start to fall apart. And it is, isn't it? Everything is crumbling. So it starts, you know, with the finances, the economies and all that. And we can see that the ecosystem is now starting to fall apart. And it's just going to compound and compound. But I can assure you that Mother Earth is refraining and holding back. And the majority of the Earth changes, so to speak, are going right at the end. So the people who are in the know, they know what's coming, but don't stop living life. Do not stop sucking the most out of this reality, because the way this reality is now, it has never, ever, ever existed before. Never in creation. There's been similar cycles that have come and gone, but never has it been so intense. Right? So don't stop living. Get out there and just suck every moment out of life. Because it'll never be like this ever again. There'll be similar cycles in the future, but never like this, exactly like this. So go for it. And Muhammad once said, if you're in the middle of planting a tree and the world's coming to an end, finish planting the tree. And I'm out there, I'm still landscaping my garden, I'm planting trees that I know I'm going to be destroyed. I'm not going to stop. I'm still nurturing and creating life. See, that's the process. Don't give up. Go for it. Really suck every moment out of this place. It's what it's here for, it's what you're here to do. Enjoy it, really enjoy it. Just see if there's anything we've got. Remember I told you about, um, just quickly, um, the Council of Twelve. Well, this is something really important to understand who these beings are, the managers of the universe. Because the Council of Twelve, the embodiment of 12 different archetypal streams of the universal consciousness. That's what they embody. And I'm sure you've heard about, oh, we've been done down to two strands of DNA. But we're meant to have 12. Well, guess what? Each being is a strand of DNA. So when we get fully activated with all our DNA strands, we are going to be functioning with all the wisdom of all 12 archetypes at all times. We will be integrating with the whole universal structure. So all these DNA researchers say that you've got two DNA strands. I can assure you there's a whole bunch of people in this room that are operating from six or seven already. Don't listen to what the scientists on this planet are telling you. Because otherwise you're operating from a split personality of only two archetypes and that is not possible. We have the whole range happening here. Some more than others. Some have a stronger archetype or DNA strand activated than others do. There is so much deception going on in this world. Twelve archetypes, twelve DNA strands. Archetype is a DNA strand. will be functioning from all twelve at all times. That is the wisdom of a human being. What's going on here on this planet right now is the process of creating peace, is bringing all the separation and all the pain and all the suffering to an end. The ripple effect. Yep. Anybody else got any questions? Anything at all? Feel free. Otherwise, I'm going to start talking again. You don't want that to happen, do you? <laughs> um, I've got a lot of dimensions. Yeah. So, um, what, what level is a star on, as, as, a, as a sort of practical demo? Hmm. As we look up on stars, hmm. what dimension your model are they in? Um, so, some are fifth. Uh, the lowest one's a fifth. Yep. That's as low as I go. In, in my model, in my understanding. I could be wrong, but that's how I see it. Yeah. And it's interesting because, like, you know, the, the, mant the, the mantis beings and these type of insect beings were the fir very first physical structures that lowered down into the, that came down into the lower universes. Because the reality was really harsh. So that's why they had this really tough external shell. 
to accommodate life in that harsh environment. So it's really interesting to understand the structure of our galaxies, of our universe, and how when your being resonates, because that's what we call gravity, right? We gravitate, your soul gravitates. People don't understand gravity. The scientists go and says, we don't understand what gravity is. Well, it's really simple. It's the law of attraction. That's all it is. There they're going through all these crazy scientific formulas, this, that, the other, and say, hey guys, the answer is really this simple. It's the law of attraction. So when a being resonates itself as a planetary body, it sends a signal out through the universe. And all the souls that need that experience and that life and that journey will naturally want to gravitate and incarnate in that realm, that vibratory realm. It's that simple. Yeah, I just want to know what you want to comment on uh, how the contact is out there and their version of the truth and hmm. the bad guys. Yeah. So, this, this your version, like their version actually in, intertwined somehow? Um, there's a lot of them that overlap. Yeah, because we're on individual journeys, sometimes my perspective will be different to someone else's perspective in small ways. Some are really big because a lot of them are being contacted by the false galactic federation of light, you see. So you've got to search deep in your heart to see what feels right for you, okay? If you feel that what I'm sharing isn't right and you resonate more with that other stuff, then that's great for your journey, that's good, you know? There's a lot of stuff around and a lot of it's each other. They are. Because what they're trying to do here is make everything as messy and confusing as possible. They, they don't want anyone to know who's who and what's what. They don't want anyone to get a grasp on it. They want everyone floating in the sea of uncertainty. Because when uncertainty breeds fear, you see. Okay? Then when you're not sure, you're not sure about yourself, you're not sure about anything that's going on. Then you're like putty in their hands. But when you've got it like I've got it, rock solid, anyone tells me, right, that you're delusional, that I'm delusional, that I'm crazy, all this sort of stuff, okay, I understand, everyone's entitled to their opinion, I fully love, honour and respect that. But they're not going to change me. They're, gonna, they're not going to change all those years of torture I went through. Okay? There's things that have happened to me that you can't imagine. No one's going to change that and take that away from me. So I've seen many different races on many different levels. I interacted with really good races. Some of the mantis races are the most incredible beings you'll ever meet. The wisdom. Trillions and trillions and trillions of years of wisdom. So much love. Okay? And then there's evil ones too. Okay? So you, the, the best way to distinguish is what resonates in here. That level of discernment surpasses everything. And not, not the heart chakra here. I'm not talking about that chakra. I'm talking about the one up here. Because okay? we're integrating all seven into one. You'll see Buddha and Jesus, big chakras open on the chest here. This is what I'm talking about. Okay? If you, if you want to go home and do a good meditation, right? you just sit there quietly and put your hands here and press in here and focus your intention in there. Don't worry about traversing the universe, you go in here. Okay? Jesus said, Buddha said, the pathway to heaven is within. You go in there, that's your connection to your higher self, to your God being. Okay? It's above, yeah. It's, it's pretty much about where the microphone is. You feel it. You, you can press in your chest here and then you'll just touch a spot and it's like, oh, it just feels different to everything else. Okay? It really does. Yeah. Once the planet becomes a star, you will be in an environment and I travelled into the future and I experienced it for myself and I assure you I didn't want to come back. There are no shadows. And that was a really freaky thing to get a handle on. Because you can go like this, Right? And you look in there, you, you look in there, and there's the same amount of light in there as there is around you. There are no shadows, because there's no duality. And there's no sun in the sky, of course, because the whole reality is illuminated. You look under, under here, under a chair, under a lounge, there's no darkness. 
It's gone. And it, or the whole ecosystem feeds off light. Everybody is living off pure energy of light, consumes anything else. You don't, no. you don't even need to breathe. You don't have to think about anything. All you do is just be. It's way beyond anything that you refer to as angelic. It's beyond all of that. On this reality, when you're with your partner, okay, and you just love each other and you just embrace each other and you don't even have to think or ask. If you need a knife and you work in the kitchen together, you go to turn around to grab a knife and there your partner is handing you a knife already. You know that total synchronistic, wonderful feeling when we're working together and loving one another in harmony. The whole, you just function in that mode. It's truly amazing. It's pure flow because you're flowing with your counterpart and your counterpart may be off in one part of the universe and, and you've got full awareness of every moment and everything that's going on and everything that your counterpart is experiencing, you're experiencing instantaneously. It's total merging of oneness because remember you'll be functioning just as the universal consciousness functions. You think of all those dimensional levels, you think of I mean, you could take one square metre of life on this planet and the complexity, you'd blow your mind figuring out the way life interacts in that one little square metre, let alone all of us and the whole planetary body and the whole galactic system and all those dimensional levels, the vastness of power, of comprehension and design and harmony and functionality that we are talking about, that is how you're going to be operating. All of that instantaneously at your disposal. Will, you. The people that will leave and, and go with the spaceships, they will initially become agents of those beings. They will enslave you. And the way they do it is, it's like, what's the difference between, between us and a communistic state? The difference is a communistic state has a play area of that much. That's their level of freedom. Ours is this big. We're still contained. We've got more toys to play with. We've got more gadgets to play with. We get kept entertained more. But the truth is, we're still enslaved. Right? Now, when these guys come along and promise you this version of ascension, well, you know, your playground is going to expand incredibly. And for those people that don't have the ability to see the boundaries, and to understand that you're still going to be enslaved inside a system because relative to what they've created here, this is going to be total freedom. People are going to take to it like candy, I'm telling you. Because they're going about creating so much despair on this planet, so when their version comes along, it's just going to be, whoa, I want some of that. You know? But they will be enslaved in the system. And then eventually, through periods of time, because there's other planetary bodies that have been set up like this one because this process is successful, okay? But there's other beings who have manifested themselves as planetary bodies, sacrificing themselves just like the Divine Mother did, who led by example, and they will facilitate incarnational experiences for cycles to birth more planetary races of Christed beings. So while well, we've got one going on here, the journey does not end, it will continue and continue and continue to happen. This talk that I'm doing here is basically spreading the message. Um, where it takes me from here, I don't know at the moment. I feel it's going to grow eventually. People will start, see, the, the more people increase their frequency and evolve, the more and more people start resonating with all this information. Um, there's an incredible amount of people, yeah, there's, there's a few people leaving now. I just want to say everybody, love, liberation and fortitude, okay? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. What, effectively, what you do is you become the sword. So by me speaking here today and this going around all around the world on the internet, what I'm doing is I am ramming me, the sword of truth, into this matrix. I'm here to bring down this matrix. 
That's what I'm here to do. We all are. I'm just doing my bit to bring it down, and that's to speak the Logos. Okay? Everybody's doing their bit. Okay? If you're if you're sweeping in a in a in a back hall in a hospital somewhere, you're doing your bit. No one's better than anybody else. Because the amount of energy while you're thinking, while you're processing, while you're interacting with people, the amount of energy that's being anchored into the earth plane for, from wherever it is you came, just your existence here is so profound. So profound. <laughs>